Oh boy, here we go. The movie almost all of us have been waiting for. Man, you know, after multiple delays, ton of allegations against Ezra Miller and the entire shifting of the DCEU, I wasn't sure this movie would ever come out. But lo and behold, here we are. The hype was definitely real. Huge anticipations for a movie of this caliber, which is like... It just, you know, changes everything and is kind of like helping kickstart the new DC Universe. This definitely was one of the most anticipated movies of the year for me. And I'm glad to say that it definitely does not disappoint. Except one thing. But, of course, like always, I'll get to that a bit later. So in the new Flash movie, worlds collide when Barry Allen uses his powers to travel back in time to change the events of the past. In doing so, he ends up becoming trapped in an alternate reality, and as we learn from some recent superhero movies, things get pretty funky. The multiverse is a very complex place where if you move one object in one space and time, things could be catastrophic in another space and time. And yeah, that's this movie in a nutshell. We saw this multiversal theme in recent, many recent Marvel shows and films. Same rules apply here, and it gets pretty crazy in this one, as you'd expect, right? Some newer or, like, less knowledgeable fans might think that they copied off Marvel <laughs> with this whole multiversal idea or whatever. For me, I'm sure DC Comics had their own little multiversal gag over there or something like that. So, I mean, who, who cares, right? Regardless, all you should know is that this movie is a whole lot of fun. I had so much fun during this movie that I was like smiling almost all throughout. The action scenes were top notch, they were exhilarating, thrilling, it was badass, exciting. From the get go we were already into it and I was just surprised by how fast this movie flew by. Like it's, it's like 2 hours and a half right? Like 2 hours 30 minutes? I mean that's pretty standard among superhero movies. But it is still fairly long, you know? But yeah, it just, it didn't really feel that long at all. And I, I almost didn't want it to end. And we've got to talk about Michael Keaton reprising his role as Bruce Wayne and Sasha Cal playing Supergirl because they were amazing. And it's like each character in this movie had their own badass montage and worked really well together. I just loved all of their scenes, solo and together. Look, I'm a Marvel nerd, I'm not that big on DC stuff, so I don't know if this Supergirl is the best or whatever. I do know that she kicked ass in this movie though. And Michael Keaton as Batman is definitely a nostalgic feat that I don't really feel because, you know, um, I never really watched the old Batman movies from like the 1980s or whatever. But I can definitely understand how he is like one of the main selling points of this movie. That, and uh, also because not everyone likes Ezra Miller. Now, I know he's done some serious shit. What, strangling a woman? Uh, child grooming? Whatever, stuff like that. Um, Like, I know people don't like him, and yeah, that sort of behavior definitely isn't respected. He's been at the forefront of, like, a lot of controversy, and yeah, I don't, I don't know if someone like that should represent The Flash. Because, I mean, I heard that he's gone through, like, some mental treatment or, like, he has a mental illness or whatever. I mean, like I said, I don't know if someone like that should represent the Flash. But in another way, like, I like him as the Flash. It definitely showed in this movie how funny, quick-witted, charismatic, and just how great of an actor he is, and for me, like, at least for me, like, I have really mixed feelings on this matter. <sighs> There's some people might hate me for what I just said, but listen, I've said what I said. I don't want to say any further. Let me know what you think. I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to get into any of that kind of stuff because this is not what I'm here for. Other than the out-of-the-world fun I had with this movie, with the thrills and the action, we also had a clever movie with a lot of clever and humorous jokes that I loved, and 
it, it was just funny like and fun seeing two Barrys and seeing old Barry teach new Barry some tricks and seeing the relationship between them grow and change. That was really fun. And I liked how it showed more of the origins of the Flash, which if I'm not mistaken, was never really shown, at least in Ezra Miller's representation of The Flash. I mean, maybe it was, and I just forgotten, okay? Like, they did it in the Justice uh, the Justice League movie. Uh, look, I didn't watch any of the DC movies coming into this one, so hey, maybe I forgot. But either way, I'm just still glad that they gave a lot of backstory to his character in this movie. Which in turn also made this movie a lot more emotional, which I kind of expected going into it, and I'm happy that I got. When the director of this movie, Andreas Muschietti, hope I didn't butcher that name, but when he said that The Flash was a special story with a lot of heart and emotion, I was getting real excited because that's what makes a great movie, especially a superhero movie. Not just the action or the story, but like making the audience feel for these characters. And I certainly did in this movie. But that's where I'm kind of... Hmm... Look, let me just tell you one thing, and I, sh I know I should have <laughs> said this at the start, but if you don't want to know anything about this movie at all, like nothing, zilch, go into this, like if you want to go into the movie blind, which I highly suggest by the way, I highly recommend that, you know. If you want to do that, don't watch the rest of this re review. Come back after you've watched the movie um, because, I mean, that's what I'm like. So I just wanted to give the heads up. Look, I'm not going to spoil. I'm definitely not going to spoil anything major. I'm just going to give a few hints, right? But I feel like I kind of need to. I'm just going to say this right now. Everything was near perfection up until the ending. It was kind of anticlimactic and what ended up being the big thing villain wise actually ended up not being big at all. The real fight wasn't really against a god who just wanted to conquer the world and destroy everything, you know, like Zod, right? Like the real fight was actually deep within Barry Allen's heart. Wow, that's deep. But it kind of felt like one of those instances where it's like, oh shit, oh shit, bad things happen, bad things happen, right? But then you wake up, and then you realize, oh, it's just a dream. That's a, that's kind of what that's kind of what I feel like is a perfect representation to this movie right after I exited the theater, which isn't that bad of a thing. I mean, I was expecting some kind of surprise, you know, because I was like during the movie, yes, we know Michael Keaton is Batman, we know this Supergirl, so the, the those kind of surprising moments are gone. From the movie. We need something else. And there is, but definitely way more anticlimactic. Like, from the hints earlier on in the movie, before, you know, that thing, I thought it was just gonna be, like, something huge and, like, an epic battle of, of some sort. But, uh, instead, uh, we get something way more emotional and it's kind of like a bittersweet moment. So, I mean, yeah, mi uh, I mean, mixed thoughts about that ending. In a way, I loved it. In another, in another way, a bit anticlimactic and kind of disappointing. But uh, yeah, also you know, not too many surprises. But but then again, I did read on like some rumors and some thoughts from some people before the movie, so I kind of just out of curiosity. So yeah, I suggest not doing that. <laughs> Go into this blind. But even then, I mean, there's still not that many surprises. We did get some cameos, uh, mo most notably like towards the start of the movie and after the credits, uh, so at least there's that. Ultimately, the Flash movie was just epic fun all around. The action was super thrilling and enjoyable, especially since I was again in the theater that had those really immersive moving seats that moved with it each punch. And it was a very clever movie with a lot of hearts. But yeah, like I said, mixed feelings about that ending, and I felt like we deserved at least one or two more surprises. So because of that, I mean, this movie doesn't go above or like over expectations. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it definitely meets expectations, which is still pretty good considering a lot of movies in the past, especially like last year, <laughs> were pretty disappointing or like performed below par. 
But someone before this one, someone notable and someone famous said that this was one of the best superhero, or like the best superhero movie you'll ever see. I know you can't take everything, What what's that saying? You can't take everything at face value. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, you, do, you you can't really, but that that did get me hyped, you know. But let me just say, I don't know. I mean, there's been a lot of superhero movies, right? Like a lot, um, a lot of really good ones. What I will say though is that I didn't have time to watch any DCU uh, movies coming into this one. There's a lot of superhero movies, like I said. Well, what I will say is that I mean. If it isn't the best superhero movie you'll ever watch, it's definitely not far from it. I'm going to give The Flash an A minus. Switching between an A or an A minus, like it's a tough one. A minus or A. Huh, man. Uh, directly after the theater, like after exiting, I was thinking A minus, but I mean, like after thinking about it, because this is me, right? two legit two hours i think i watched it i think i finished watching this movie legit just two hours ago right i haven't really had too much time to digest it because i just want to get this review out and my overall thoughts right um but like after taking another full day to think about it i feel like because the ending is really a mixed bag for me but i feel like after another day of like thinking about it and digesting it i will I might even rate it higher than I initially said, which is like an A minus. I definitely don't think this is an A plus movie though. Let me just say that. But you know, like I said, if it's not the best superhero movie you'll ever see, it's definitely not far from it. There might be, there might be something I forgot to say in this review. There might be something. You know what? There's always something I leave out that I figure out during editing, like when I'm editing, always, legit almost always, I want to say 95% of the time, when I'm editing, when I get to editing, I'm like, damn, I missed out on something. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's too late to put it in now. Sometimes I do put it in there, but like, I'm not actually recording. I just put in clips of the movie just to kind of hide the fact that I added that in later. Let's hope I don't, <laughs> man. I feel like I forget more things, like the sooner I make the video, like if I take like a day, sometimes like night sessions are hard because once I finish watching the movie, I eat, then I come back, it's already 10 p.m. I take time like dis dissecting the movie, thinking about what I want to say, and then actually recording it, bam, two hours nearly passes, and then another two hours to edit. I, I go to sleep around 2 a.m. So that's why sometimes if like there's an advanced screening, on the on some occasions like with transformers i just wait until the next day then i just think of more things to say but sometimes in these cases when the flash movies that release on the same day like in basically almost every country i just really want to get my review in like faster just so i can potentially get more views because hey it's kind of hard being a small content creator you know the popular people rise to the top while the the um the the less popular people fucking you know weep in the shadows so it's really hard to get out there nowadays but um i'm just gonna leave it at that i mean what else do i want to say look what does this mean what does this movie mean for the future of the dceu we know there's aquaman 2 coming later and I don't even know how that's going to work because who's getting scrapped and who's getting kind of recasted? I don't know. But I do like the fact how this movie is, it definitely does feel like jumping and kind of, you know, trying to start and just rebooting the next phase, the, the next DC universe, the new, newly improved, hopefully, um, we'll see. But I do like it because it explores the multiversal aspect and how there's, you know, multiverse. So it's kind of like Spider-Man No Way Home. Or, and the Spider-Verse cartoon, like, animated movies, where it's like, oh, man, before that one, like, No Way Home, you're like, oh, wait, there's so many Spider-Man series, which one is the true one? But then, bam, the multiverse happens, it explains everything. And I know there's multiversal things in the DC Comics, I don't know how it differs, like I said, I'm not really into DC Comics that much, but I guess we'll see, but I like that from this movie, um, but we'll see, I guess, man. <clears throat> a lot to get through in this 
Ooh, but guys, let me know what you think down below. Like us up if you enjoyed, and as always, feel free to check out any of my previous videos. Like, comment, sub, all that jazz, please. Um, yeah, until next time, I guess.